Hello, it's David here. I'd like to talk about scatter diagrams and free DV. Um, first, I'd like to talk about what a scatter, what is a scatter diagram and plot. What's it all about, and what does it tell us? And then I'll look at some use cases, such as adjusting the transmit and receive levels on free DV, and the effect of transmit filtering on free DV. So this is a, a digital voice radio system. Uh, as we usually use free DV, we have a microphone goes into some sort of uh, sound blaster, A to D. We then convert the speech to a compressed digital format, add some FEC, modulate it, and send it over uh, a, uh, via a HF radio, over a HF channel, where we do the reverse. We demodulate it, FEC decode it, codec 2 decode it, back to audio, and then via a D to A out of a speaker. So the setup I've got here, that I'll show you now, is something like this. Um, I'm using the Linux command line to generate some tests rather than Codec 2 data. Uh, I'm just generating some test bits, putting them through the same sort of modulator, um, sending them out the two radio port via a line interface to a, an FT817 HF radio, through an attenuator that drops the level uh, down by about 100 dB um, to an IC7200 HF radio, and then via the USB interface of the IC7200 into the from radio port of FreeDV. We've got FreeDV running in test mode, and what that does is it, uh, it knows the test bits we sent, it compares them, can count the errors, and plot things like bit error rate, and the usual scatter spectrum signal-to-noise ratio plots. Uh, so that's the setup we've got uh, for this demonstration. Um, Here's a picture of my FT817 being driven. It's got a modulation indicator here. Um, it could be an ALC meter in a reg regular rig. And you can see it's just showing one bar, just tickling the uh, the ALC level there. And that's the uh, the recommended level for free DV. Um, out of the antenna port here, you can just see the start of um, a bunch of attenuators. I've got these little coaxial inline attenuators. And I've got uh, three of them at 30 dB each, so about uh, a 30 dB attenuation. And this is putting it out at about half a watt, so we've got, um, I don't know, minus 50, minus 60 dBm going into the uh, IC7200, which we're using for the receiver. So what is a scatter diagram? Well, the modulator we use for free dV um, takes two bits at a time and maps them to a phase angle. So on this um, circle here, you can see we've got four different points. They represent four different angles that are 90 degrees apart. Um, if the two bits we're sending are zero, zero, we have this angle, if there's zero, one, then this angle, and so on. So we send one of these four phases to the receiver. So it's called phase shift king. Um, because there's four phases, we call it um, QPSK, uh, quadrature phase shift king. Um, now if we plot the phases at the demodulator, what we get is a scatter diagram. We get these four points spotted, uh, plotted on the screen. Uh, now for free dv we use a modem with 16 carriers. Um, each carrier sends 100 bits per second. Uh, in these two-bit um, chunks, um, and what we do is at the receiver we plot all of those uh, scatter diagrams on top of each other. So for each of the, we've really got 16 scatter diagrams superimposed on each other, and that lets us um, analyse the signal in different ways, which I'll show you in a moment. Okay, so let's get free DV up. Uh, we'll start it running. Now, if I put the volume up. You might be able to hear the modem tones there uh, running. I'm just leaning in front of a, a little speaker here. That's the modem tones going through the system. And we can see up here, we, this is the spectrum. Um, don't worry about this line off here. That's just a, a local uh, interferer uh, that's not related to this, this test, but happens to be in the passband. Um, you can see the, the various different carriers coming through. There's 16 across there, plus the BPSK uh, pilot in the middle, uh, which is just the two-phase signal. So there are all the parallel tones in the modem. Um, down here we have the scatter diagram. Um, over here we have bit error rate. And you can see here, here are the four points. Um, so each of these tones is transmitting 50 times a second. It's transmitting a phase. Each of those phase contains two bits. So each of these carriers uh, is carrying um, 100 bits per second. And we superimpose the phases we receive. And that's our scatter diagram. These two outlying points are the uh, binary phase shift king from this uh, center pilot that we use to uh, aid synchronization uh, of the, the, the modem. So that's the scatter diagram in action. You can see it 
flickering around as various bits are received. There's a little bit of noise and imperfections in the system, so we get that sort of uh, scintillating effect. Okay. So now I'd like to show the effect of uh, different gains in the system. Um, as I indicated, the sweet spot for the modulator was uh, sort of one sort of bar or just tickling the ALC. Now, I've got a control here that I can turn that um, turns up the modulation. Let's have a look what happens uh, to both the spectrum and the scatter diagram. Now, okay, so the level's going up, as you'd expect. We're driving things a bit harder. Um... Now, look what's happening to those points on the scatter diagram. As we drive it harder and harder, they get a bit fuzzier and bigger. And we also start to see grass come up. Um, by that I mean this stuff on the side of the spectrum. We're getting some interfering signals. So we turn the level up a bit more. Oh, that's full there. But what you can see is plenty of grass. Uh, in the signal, which is basically distortion that you're feeding over the, into the RF signal, um, and the scatter plots have become large. Uh, dots have become larger. That indicates the signal's not as pure. And look what's happened to the signal to noise ratio. It's dropped down to 10 or 11 dB from around 20 dB before. Um, we're not getting actual any bit errors at this point, so it's not bad enough distortion to introduce bit errors. But if we had some noise, like channel noise as well, the modem performance would be impaired. And we've got this um, out-of-band signal that we don't want to transmit coming up as well, and a poorer signal-to-noise ratio. So let's pull that down again. And as we lower the drive to the uh, transmitter, the signal-to-noise ratio improves. We're actually sending less power, but the signal-to-noise ratio is coming right up. And that's what we want to uh, optimise to get the minimum bit rate and the best digital speech. So now you can see that the actual amount of the plots, are, the uh, dots are scattered now, is much smaller than they were before. So that's an indication of what happens if we overdrive uh, the uh, modulator. We get basically poorer signal quality. And the scatter diagram uh, is one way of viewing that. Now I'll do the same thing on the receive side. I'll turn up the, uh, the gain on the IC7200 here. And uh, once again, you see the signal come up, but the signal to noise ratio is starting to drop again. And as we hit here, eventually we get some sort of clipping happening. And you can see once again that grass is coming up on the side of the spectrum. And we're getting pretty noisy here. I uh, haven't quite hit any bit errors yet, but if I turn that up far enough, watch it, the bit errors happen. Oh, there we go, we're starting to get some bit errors. What's happening there is occasionally a point that was meant to be here is straying over here. And it's being interpreted, interpreted as a different um, set of two bits than what we sent. Another way to look at the bit errors in uh, test mode like this is so uh, we've got a plot here of uh, this is the bit errors for each um, carrier as it comes through. There's 16 lines there, and each time you see a little arrow, a little triangle, that means a bit error has been detected. So you can see some, some carriers are getting more errors than others in this case. As we turn the level up, we get a much higher bit error rate, uh, and you can see that's about 3% there. So we'll pull that down again. Grass goes away, signal to noise goes up, and all the errors disappear. Uh, if you want to run test mode yourself, uh, that's an option off we stop them uh, off the uh, options menu. Click on that, test frames, and then you can transmit and receive uh, test frames from the system and do something similar to what I'm doing here. When we start, little transient of errors there as it syncs up. We'll just get rid of that with the reset button. Now, one thing that's interesting is because this is a... Uh, a phase shift uh, modem, um, the actual level doesn't affect things much. So, you know, we can turn up turn up and down the actual level we're receiving, and um, the signal-to-noise ratio bounce is about the same there, the same there. It's level insensitive. Um, the reason for that is, um, is that it's a phase shift modem. That occasional blip there is because the file I'm sending gets reset every now and again. We'll just uh, clear that. So, here's our uh, scatter diagram. That zooming effect is just a, an automatic gain control on the scatter diagram. But as we move the level up and down, 6, 12 dB, doesn't matter. We get the same signal-to-noise ratio, more or less, and zero bit errors. Just shows how a, a phase shift key, key modem is insensitive to the level that you're sending through it. Um, that's kind of useful in some cases. You don't have to worry too much about the gain level, as long as it's not being clipped. Now, the other thing we can do is um, show the effect on the scatter diagram of noise and... Uh, 
um, other cha channel impairments such as filtering. Um, what I can do here, oops, wrong window. Okay, is the I can change the nature of the signal I'm sending. Uh, I'm just using some Linux command line tools because it makes it easier. So what we do first of all is let's add a filter. I'm going to add a filter to the uh, transmit spectrum. This is similar to what some radios do. They have a sort of filter across the passband. I'm going to add a, a first order um, low pass filter with a 3dB point at 1500 Hz right in the second of our waveform. So I'll apply that filter. Now what's happened here is this filter starts here so the signal is a little bit more a low pass on this side than it is on uh, this side. You can see these carriers here are higher level than this one. Now look at the scatter diagram. It's turned into this cross shape because what we're doing is plotting the phases from this carrier on the same graph as the phases from this carrier. This one is lower level than this one so its points are closer to the origin in the centre here. So we've got this X shape. You often see that with fading channels. You see this X shape because the level of different carriers changes with the, the HF fade. That in general is bad uh, for our signal quality, especially if your radio does it um, or, um, uh, without uh, you, know, you telling it to. So at the moment I've simulated a 3dB filter uh, across the signal, but some radios do that by themselves. They might not have the same gain at this frequency as at this frequency. So you really want a, a, a radio with a flat transmit spectrum, otherwise it leads to... Uh, this sort of scatter diagram and these inner points, or these lower level carriers, tend to get more bit errors. Now we can demonstrate that um, by applying some white noise to the signal, like this. Now you can see the scatter diagram gets very noisy, uh, it, these dots here. And when these dots, one of these dots moves across to the other side due to noise, we get a bit error. Uh, and that's still a pretty low error rate, so let's increase the noise a little bit. Just getting the occasional bit error rate, bit error. Let's apply, there we go, plenty of bit errors now. That's a bit error rate of around, what is it, 3%, 3.2%. Um, and we've got that spectral tilt, remember. So we've got a, a filter making this carrier a bit higher than this one. 3% errors. Let's look at the test frame errors, and you see, oh, heaps of errors coming through. Okay. So let's turn off that filter. Uh, I'll do some uh, command line magic over here. Remove the low pass filter. Reprocess the uh, signal with the same noise level. Mushka. Most of the errors disappear. Error rate over here, much lower than here. Uh, we reset and we're getting error rate of less than 1%. So that shows how <clears throat> a little bit of filtering across the transmit spectrum, what it does is it pushes these carriers down closer to the noise floor. The total power might be the same, but uh, it'll be unequally distributed across the carriers. So if you can, try and adjust your radios for a flat uh, um, a transmit spectrum. Okay, that's all I wanted to show you. That's all about uh, scatter diagrams and 3DV. Thank you.